My name is Vincent Sunday, and um, I'm a software engineer. So, my question, um, the first question will come out from your lecture, and I want us to just clarify that before we go into... Brother, can you speak a bit slowly because there's echo? So, can I have your name? Mention your name, but speak a bit slowly because there's a problem in the system. Too much echo is there. Yes, brother. Okay. So, I said my first question is from your lecture, uh, which I want us to clarify that before maybe we we'll move to other questions. Okay, so my question goes by like this. You were saying there in your lecture that God doesn't have a son, and it is the most derogatory thing to him, for him to have a son. You actually made some other examples like... I can't hear you, brother. Okay, you said... The monitor so speakers are very bad. The monitor speakers are very bad. I can hear the echo, but I cannot hear from the monitor speakers. The monitor speakers are atrocious. It's not working, I think. I Only for sure. Only for sure. Okay, brother, can you come in the front and let's ask? Can you come in the front here? Okay, yes. Okay, ask. Uh, sorry. Good, good so, you said in your lecture that God does not have a son and it's a big derogatory to him to ascribe a son to him. And you even said um, how people should react if how people should react if um, something derogatory is said to public appearance. Uh, but I want to go into first of all the clarity about God having a son or not. And I discovered from checking the Quran, Quran does not Quran. Maybe we will pick it one after the other to see some of the things that Quran says. And um, be able to say, like Quran chapter 30, 39, verse 4. I want to read it, but anybody can also read it. Quran chapter 39, verse 4. I can't hear the last part. What did you say Quran says? Quran chapter 39. Quran chapter 39. Verse 4. Verse 4. What does it say? Okay, he's saying there, if Allah had wanted to, have, to take his, himself a son, he could have chosen anyone he wants out of those who he created. Glory be to him. I can't hear you. Okay, maybe you could read it out for me. Okay. Quran chapter 39, verse 4. Verse 4, yes? So, will you read it? Yes. I want you to read it. You maybe want to read? You, you said you can't hear me, so maybe you should read it. Yes. Okay. Quran chapter 39, verse 4. If Allah had wanted to take himself a son or have a son, he could have chose anyone he wanted out of those whom he created. Glory be to him that he, have, he should have a son. Now, that's my beginning. From this Quranic verse, it is clear that Allah could choose to have a son. Ah. Okay, I'll give the reply. That's the question? No, that's not my question. That's the What's your problem. question? Tell me. Huh? This is you are the misinterpreting question. the Quran. What's the question? Tell me, I will tell you. Okay. So This verse doesn't mean that Allah can choose. I will tell you. Okay, good. You ask your question, I will listen. What's yes. your question? There are many Quranic verses I want to use to build up the question so that you can answer it clearly. What's your question? Good. The question is, can Allah have a son? And when we look at what the Quran itself is saying, the first one is that it's saying that if Allah wants to have a son, he can decide to have a son. That is number one. Number two is now that um, he said that in Quran chapter 6, verse 101, 101, Quran chapter 6, verse 101, he said he is the, is the originator of heavens and earth. How could he have a child when he had no mate? He created all things and had perfect knowledge of everything. Now, Quran, I don't know if I should continue. Should I continue? Yes, sir. Okay. What's so, the question? Yes. 
Quran chapter 6 verse 101 is saying that if Allah choose to have a wife, who is going to be the partner? Because he doesn't have a partner. But Quran chapter 19, Surat al-Imran, uh, Ayah 2021, the same thing is a question that Mary, Miriam, asks the angel who actually came from verse 17. Allah shows that he came in the respect, in the appearance of a man in all respect and dialogue with him and tell him that you have a son. And he said, how can I have a son without, a, without oh, knowing anybody? I got a question. So he was able to have a, she was able to have a son without an husband. So in Quran chapter 6 verse 101, that is also possible by Allah because Allah said whatever Very he likes to say. I got a question. Good. So, yeah. and but to the, continue with that. The, the, the first verse was which? The first Quranic verse was which? Sir? The first Quranic verse. Yes, I've not finished the first one. No, no, what was the reference? The, the reference, Quran chapter, the first one. Quran chapter 39 verse 4. Okay, fine, I got it. The brother has quoted two verses. Surah, he has quoted Surah Zumur chapter 39 verse number 4. And Surah Anam chapter 6 verse number 101. And Surah Zumur chapter 39 verse number 4 says, If Allah had intended to take a son, he could have chosen from what he creates, whatever he willed. Exhausted is he, he is Allah the one and prevailing. Now the brother asking a question, this means if Allah wants, he can take a son. And similar in Surah Anam chapter 6 verse 101. So brother says that Allah can take a son if he wishes. That's the question. But the verse is very clear, if, yes. no. but it does not, it is not befitting for Allah to have a son. Complete the full verse. If you read this context, it says in the, in the first verse, unquestionably for Allah is the pure religion. And those who take protector say, we only worship them who may bring us nearer to Allah. Allah will judge between concerning them. Indeed, Allah does not guide who is a liar and a disbeliever. Read in context. Don't read out of context. So Allah is saying, these people are liars and disbelievers. Then Allah says, if Allah had intended, that means Allah does not intend to take a son. It's a, it's a, it's a telling. So read the context. It says, unquestionably for Allah is the pure religion. Allah does not guide who is a liar and a disbeliever. Then the next verse starts. So don't quote out of context. Correct? If you go to in context, you come to know, Allah is telling all those people who say Allah is, Allah is a son, etc., they are liars. And then Allah says, if Allah had intended to take a son, he could have chosen from what he creates, whatever he will. Exalted is he, that means he is far above having a son. Okay. So this, let me complete. You ask the question, now listen to my answer. Don't interrupt. Understand? You, you don't understand the Quran. You are like saying they are liars. What you are doing, you are taking a verse from the Quran out of context and trying to misguide. In context it says that this is all nonsense. These people are liars. And even the next verse. So from here we come to know if Allah wanted, he could have done Allah is far superior than this. Then coming to your next verse of Surah Anam, chapter number 6. Verse number 101. Verse number 101. It says, He is the originator of the heavens and the earth. How could he have a son when he does not have a companion? The Quran says, How can Allah have a son when he doesn't have a wife? Allah is giving the answer. How can Allah have a son when he doesn't have a companion? And he's created all things. When he's created all things, he doesn't require a companion. We were created. He is uncreated. So Allah is saying, how will Allah have a son when he does not have a companion? He created everything. So this verse is very explicit. Allah cannot have a son. There's another verse in the Quran which says, if Allah had a son, I would be the first person to bow. Quran says, if anyone says Allah has a son, tell them I'll be the first person to worship him. 
That doesn't mean Allah has a son. There's a verse in the Quran that if Allah had a son, tell them I would be the first person to worship him. That means Allah cannot begin a son. The whole Quran should be read together. You can't take out of context. Quran is very clear cut in Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Qul Allahu ad. Say he's Allah one and only. Allahu Samad. Allah the eternal and absolute. Lam yirad wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kufana. There's nothing like him. So this is the definition of Allah. First you have to know the definition of Allah and then try and read the other verses of the Quran. You can't read out of context and try and misguide the people. Allah is telling in this word. There are people who are liars who will say this. Okay. So, let me finish. What? Okay. You ask the question, you have to listen to my answer. This is no debate session. Yes. I, I want you to just I have not finished the answer. With the Quran I have not finished the answer. Verse, 19, verse 20 to 21. I have not finished the answer. Okay, sir. Continue, sir. Do you understand English? Continue, sir. I understand. Why not? <laughs> I do understand. English. You can hear me. I cannot hear you because the speakers are there. Oh, sorry. Correct? Okay. So let me finish the answer. Okay, sir. So the definition of Allah is in Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Qul Allahu ad, say is Allah one only. You cannot hear me also call, okay, this verse of the Quran says that Allah is two. <coughs> then there will be a contradiction. And there is no contradiction in the Quran. Allah says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 32, Afala is the tabburun al-Quran. Walau qana min indi garilla. Now do the fiqhila from kasira. Do they not consider the Quran with care? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there have been contradictions. So number one, there is no contradiction in the Quran. So you assuming that Allah can is nonsense. It says, if Allah wanted, that if Allah doesn't have a companion, how can he have a son? That does not mean that he has a son. Now coming to your question of Surah Maryam. In Surah Maryam chapter number 19, when Archangel Gabriel comes and asks Mother Mary, Maryam al -Salam, you shall have a son. She replies, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? How shall I have a son when no man has touched me? The reply given by Archangel Gabriel is, If Allah decrees a matter, he just says, be and it is. So when she says, normally yes, for having a son, you have to procreate. For having a son, you have to procreate. But the reply given by the Akhil is, if Allah decrees, if Allah wills, but Allah does not will. Allah can create Adam and Salam without father and mother. He created Eve with a man without a female. He created Isa alayhi salam with a mother without a father. If Allah decrees a matter, He will, but Allah will not decree ungodly things like becoming a human being, like having a son. That's for human beings. It, Allah cannot go against His definition. You understand? If Allah decrees a matter, yes. But did Allah say that? No. Allah says, Lam yalad, wa lam yulad. He begets not knowing the begotten. So this is the definition of Allah. The moment He begets, He ceases to be God. The moment Allah has a son, he will cease to be God. Do you understand? If, if the definition of God in the Quran is Allah does not beget, he begets not, nor is he begotten. The moment you say Allah begot a son, he ceases to be God. Do you understand? Can I ask a question on that? Do you understand this, but? If Allah begets a son, he ceases to be God. Do you understand this? That's Quran chapter 39. Quran chapter 39 verse 4 we negate that statement if he intended he did, if it's a question for example it is a sarcastic question for example it's a rhetoric so rhetoric if Allah had a son I would be the first to bow that doesn't mean Allah has that's a rhetoric if you are correct I will give you a million dollars but you are not correct so if doesn't mean it is correct you understand no? So these are rhetoric questions. If Allah had a son, I would be the first to worship him. Allah doesn't have a son. So you don't understand English correctly. Because you don't understand English correctly, you are trying to say something and quoting out of context. First of all, you quote a verse out of context. 
If you quote us out of context, it will misguide the people. I got the correct context. Do you understand? Do you understand that you quoted out of context? Yes or no? If you want me to quote it from the uh, from the beginning, I can quote it. It doesn't Sorry? matter. If you want me to quote it from the beginning, like from you have to earlier, you have to. I can. We did not. Okay, that's not a problem. You did a mistake. Uh, uh, okay. That's you did a mistake. a mistake. Yes. You have to apologize. <laughs> Okay. If I say, you know, Quran says Jesus is God. Say Do you again. know that? Quran says Jesus is God. Okay. Do you know that? Out of context. Okay. Uh, I... Wait, wait, wait. Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 17, no full context. Lakat kafr ladina kalu inna laha huwal masyub numarema. They are doing kufr. Those who say, Jesus is God. Yes, I so Jesus is God is there in the Quran, but out of context. The context is they are blaspheming. They are blaspheming those who say Jesus is God. Yes. They are blaspheming. Blasphemy, not blasphemy. Why not? What is blasphemy? Is to ascribe, even according to Islam, is to ascribe another God to God. So if you say, if you quote out of context, it is devilish. Okay. If you did it purposely, it is devilish. Okay, so, so you have to always quote in context. You can't just quote half. Now your question is over. No. For I already answered your question. I, no, wait. I, Don't say no. You get three references of the Quran. I'm saying you I get three references so, of the Quran. Yes, Surah Zumur chapter 39, verse number 4. I'll Surah Anam, Surah 6, chapter 6, verse number 101. No, that's not the And all. Surah Maryam chapter number 19. I answered all those three. I have not finished on that. I was still quoting when you decided you to cannot, answer. This it. is not a debating section. If you yes. want to debate, you hire a hall. I will send my student to debate you. No debate. No debate. It's a question answer Can session. Add the last verse. Quran chapter 21. This is a question answer session. You have that's, to go beyond the queue. That concludes the question. Quran chapter 21, verse 91. And Which one? Quran chapter 21, verse 91. 21, 91. Yes. And my question, to conclude that memorandum question, which I Okay, this answer. is the last, this is the last yeah, reference you're giving. It's just 21, 91. Okay, what yes. does it say? Now, he's saying there that, alas. Do you agree that you made a mistake in the first two verses? Say yes. Say Otherwise, yes. I, the answer I gave. Now, are you convinced that the first two verses doesn't say that Allah can have a son? Do you agree or not? He said, if he wants to have a son. If doesn't mean, if I say, if you are right, I will give you a million dollars. Does it mean you are right? That means it's not if you I to decide. It's if not me to are... decide. It's Allah to decide. If Dada, Allah wait, listen, wants. Listen, wait, wait, not wait, not wait, wait, wait. Not anybody. Don't talk when I'm talking. Wait, Don't wait. talk when I'm talking. No Do you understand no. English? Why not, sir? Do you understand English? Okay. Why not? I'm speaking English. I think you can't understand English. I understand. Then why are you breaking the rules? In question and session, you cannot interrupt. You cannot talk in between. Do you know that? Because I've you cannot. The you know, again, you're talking. Okay. Is this a debate or is it a question and answer session? It's a question, sir. So once you ask a question, you have to keep quiet. Okay. Thank you. You Christian missionaries. You are a Christian missionary. I'm a what? Are you a Christian missionary? I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Ah. I'm a Christian. Are you a Christian missionary? I'm a Christian. Are you a missionary? I'm a Christian. I'm just Are you a father or a pastor? Say that again. Are you a father or a pastor or a... No, I'm a Christian. Oh, you're afraid to tell your identity. Okay. You told 21, 21, 91. Yes. I, I've only quoted the verse. I've not said my question in it. So if you permit me to say my question so that you can explain it. Quran chapter 21 verse 91. So my question there... Is it, and is in that build up of that other questions? Is that from that verse, Allah said, He's the one who sent His angel to breathe, to go and breathe His spirit into the private part of Mary. Now, I, I looking at it, even humanly speaking, that if I do anything to the private part of a woman, Anything that comes out of it, I am responsible for it. Now, if it is Allah, the saint is angel to take his spirit and breathe it into the Mary, then Allah is responsible for that child. 
and that child is 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 son of Allah. Likewise, like if I did that to a woman, is my son. Okay. Did you understand my first two answers, yes or no? I'll, yes, yes. I will give the answer. Thank you. Sir. So first two answers you understood. I understand that you were wrong. I no? understand. I understand. You understand very good. So first two answers is agree that Allah. Now I'm coming to the last. Now you don't reply back, please. This is a question and session. He did not tell the verse. The verse of the Quran of Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 91 says, and mentioned the one who guarded her chastity. So we blew into a garment through our angel Gabriel and we made her and her son a sign for the worlds. He is saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blown his spirit into Isa alayhi salam. Correct? Yes, sir. I agree with it. Do you know Allah says in the Quran in Surah Hijar chapter 15, verse 29, Allah brought the spirit into every human being. Quran says. Does it mean I'm God? Does it mean you're God? You don't understand the Quran. Allah says in Surah Hijar chapter 15, verse 29, Allah has grown the spirit into every human being. Allah says in Surah Sajda chapter 32, verse number 9, He's blow Here, blowing spirit means Allah has put his knowledge into every human being, including Isa alayhi salam. Now the problem is, you read one verse, you don't read the full Quran. Have you read the full Quran? Have you read the full Quran? I've read as, as, as much Have as you as read the full Quran cover to cover? Have you read the full Quran? As much as I can. Ah, as much as I can. He could read only five verses. No. Or ten verses. No. As much as I can means what? You are afraid to tell that, sorry, I have not read the complete Quran. This is trying to beat around the bush. Now, please don't answer. Your question is over. I've already answered your question. I've already answered your question. Now, don't talk. I'm completing the answer. This brother came to deceive the people. As much as I can. He's afraid to say, I read 100 verses or 200 verses or 1000 verses. As much as I can. These are the ways the Christian mysteries, they try and attack. Good example a brother has given here. How I give in my talk, they come and knock at the doors. Now normal Muslim would have got scared. Quoting was out of the context. This is a very good example you have in Nigeria. This brother is coming here trying to deceive the Muslim audience. Trying to deceive the Muslim audience. The first two he agreed. Do you agree that the Quran says Allah has born the spirit in every human being? So every human being is God, according to you. He breathed the spirit to Mary in a private part. To all human beings, he just breathed. That is what the Quran says. Quran chapter 21, verse 91. Every, everybody can read it. Quran chapter 21, Go verse 91. Don't waste your time. Go and sit down. Go and waste your time. 